All right, today is International Pathology Day. It's celebrated annually on the second uh, Wednesday of November. It was created to raise awareness of pathology and its role in preventing and fighting diseases amongst um, the public. Now, pathology is a study of disease and injury that acts as a bridge between medicine and science. It underpins every aspect of patient care, from the diagnosis and treatment of common diseases to the use of cutting-edge genetic technologies to treat patients with life-threatening conditions. This is an important day in our lives. So, happy International Pathology Day. Speaking, to, speaking about pathology, I think your story should come first. You know, what did you find for us in the news? Oh, well, <laughs> so um, there's a news going viral and this story is about the lady who reportedly uses um, a knife to mistakenly kill her friend during a misunderstanding. Um, so a yet to be identified lady has killed her friend during an argument in an apartment in Dubai, UAE. Um, in a trending video, the two ladies can be seen arguing while dragging a knife. One of the ladies uses the knife to cut the other's hand in the process. The victim who's bleeding profusely can be seen calling out for help as other eyewitnesses berate the the suspect and threaten to invite the police one of the eyewitnesses can be heard telling the suspect i told you to calm down let me call the police according to the video the victim was left to die in the pool of her own blood as her friends refused to carry out a first aid procedure on her or rush her to the hospital so that sums it up you know i saw that that video um two things came to my mind first of all why would you be fighting like having an argument and the first thing i mean, I mean what you would be thinking of is holding a weapon like a knife that's number one number mm -hmm. two is it possible that there are illegal occupants in the uae because why would you not call an emergency response did you think that it was just a small cut i mean i had a very tiny cut in my my hand here now it's even disappeared. You know, the speed at which I rushed to the hospital because the blood was all over the place. This was just a tiny cut. And this is not even, it wasn't linked to any vein or anything. So I'm just thinking in my head, were they illegal um, immigrants? Do you understand? Were they illegal migrants like living in the U UAE without documentation? Because if not, why would you not call the emergency services to be able to at least save her life? I mean, a knife cut is not something that kills somebody. I said maybe the knife is poison, but it doesn't seem like it. it's just that the the lady was caught in a in a very um, what's it called one of her veins was, was caught. Yeah, through. she was slit yeah. around the wrist. And you know, so she, of course she would bleed to death, right? So that's that's one. Number two, why would you be fighting? Like literally, how do people think? Like you you are fighting. Emotions cannot be controlled, right? You have to you have to be conscious of the fact that if you allow rage, you know, go anywhere near you. It, you, at some point, rage can actually make you take leave of your senses. So you don't, you're not even thinking. So it is when it, is hap it has happened, then it's now done on you that I just committed murder. So that's why even when you're angry, like literally, natural conversation, I see people, next thing they just go carry bottle to break and go. What if the person dies in the process? Mm. Do you understand? So, I mean, it's, it's, it's sad. Yeah. It was just a very avoidable death. If you ask me. But you were right on the on the asking first of all if they're illegal immigrants because if they were not if they were legally in the in Dubai they would have called the police if they were all legally hmm. resident in Dubai hmm. they would have called the police because Dubai is known for everything is known for their speed um how they react to such things they have the police or on almost every street if not every street yes if not every street they have cameras and things like that so they take their security very very importantly mm. so obviously they were that's, sad. that's quite unfortunate mm. jennifer your story it still doesn't even make any sense because if they were not legally um living there and that's what they were scared of now it's worse mm. the fact that they couldn't tie it you know just you know, just take a cut and tie it to stop the bleeding. Yeah. But she was bleeding profusely and it's from the arm. So obviously that's downward. So definitely the blood boiling. Yeah. So she ran out of blood very quickly. Mm. Yeah. Sad. Very sad.
<clears throat> All right, uh, so for me, 14,000 Nigerians met for deportation due to lack of identification cards, says the German Chancellor. So there are lots of Nigerians who are currently living <clears throat> living in Germany, right, um, who have been seeking asylum. So about 14,000 of them might be deported. 14,000? 14, 14,000 of Whoa. them might be deported. They That's don't have any number. identification card, nothing at all. So it, it's, it's um, I mean, it seems like the German Chancellor is sympathizing with, um, with some of them because even the Nigerian government is reluctant to admit some of these people or to even take care or even do anything about it. 14,000. Yeah, so 14,000. How do they know they are all Nigerians? <laughs> if they don't have identity. They would have uh, probably asked them what their name is or something. Some I of mean, them might actually have... True, uh, since there's no identity. Yeah. yeah. That means you can claim they're from anywhere. Why did they bring all of them to Nigeria and say they're 40,000? Well, I wouldn't say that. Germany is one of the countries that, I mean, it's very easy for you to, to leave there legally. Genesis and no, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this to say that, for instance, if you went to school, you know they have like free tuitions, right? Free tuition. You have to get there. No, hold on now. So how did they get there? You know when we spoke about visiting know, visa. You know when we spoke about illegal. Because I don't understand what Nigerians go and do. Germany is not like UK that they are speaking English. You have to go and learn. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, some people, some people really don't care as far as they leave the country, yeah. right? Anywhere, they would learn anywhere the language that is and not do whatever Nigeria is, is okay for them. Because the thing is, people who live abroad, right, have made it seem like it is very easy for you to to do well mm. over there, mm. right? It is a sinner environment. Things are working. Now, when people see things like that, they want a piece of it. So, any means... To actually go there. What are we saying? We've seen people who um stow away. Yeah, stow away. And then I mean they, they would do they would risk anything. So you can you probably go to France and see many people, years they, you ago. don't even understand the language. But many you know that years you can ago, yeah. went through this thing and if I almost died. You went through this I think through ship or ship. something. <laughs> but if if he tells his story. You either go by this, sea or you story go is through the now. desert. Yeah. Oh. It's so, sad. It's sad. Both. 14,000 is not a small number. It's a lot of people. And we have enough here. Just think of one of these, our big churches. Just the crowd. For yeah. The That's a lot. Of. The Ogo State Police Command on Wednesday said that it has arrested a 40-year-old secondary school teacher, Ola Niro Adewale, for allegedly sexually um, um, assaulting innocent girls. And this was said by the spokesperson of the State Police Command, um, SP Omolola Odutola. Um, she confirmed this um, to the correspondent of um, Punch newspaper. Until his arrest, he was a mathematics teacher at Ebenezer Grammar School, Iberi Kodo, Abiokuta in Open State. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say that this is good news that he's been arrested. I want us to also follow through to prosecute. Then we're still waiting to hear the Delta State story for the four-year-old girl who that was sexually um, assaulted. So I mean, these things, as as long as you know these guys that rape, but you know, I hear female rape too. But as long as anybody that is a rapist, you know, is caught and of course sentenced, you understand, will be fine. Because the more people are caught, the more people are being sentenced, you know, the more there is a very, very strong, um, what's it called, um, show of justice in that regard. I think we would have a very, very, it will start to decline, the, the, the rate of rape to start to decline. And don't forget that some of these rapists, they are actually coming from somewhere. A lot of them have debased mind, yeah. like, literally, so you can't really help them. So the thing again is a vicious circle. Mm -hmm. We need to also start to treat people and give people healthy sexual orientations, not the kind of sexual orientations that you think that anything you can just do. Yeah. On that note, let's take a break. Let's discuss donations. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 